I'm Don Dixon and I want to welcome you to another edition of our master class on mapping and interpretation. The purpose of this study is to allow us to be out there somewhere out there in that deep water that we're talking about all the time. Be out there somewhere in deep water and locate those spots, the exact spots in deep water where the fish are. You know, as we continue this study, it's important that I remind you of something that I said six months ago. The how and the what in fishing is not nearly as important as the where. Buck's favorite statement, can't catch fish if you're fishing where they ain't. We've got to have a way of discovering where those fish are when they're out there. If they're literally out there 95% of their entire adult life, which they are, by the way, that's a scientific fact. 95% of the life is spent out there. Well, if we know that and we accept that, and we want to catch fish 100% of the time, we've got to discover where they are in deep water. And our key to that, as we began the study months ago, was looking and discovering and identifying the 17 different types of structure that exist. And we did a complete study on that. And I think we, we covered it rather well. Everybody seemed to have an understanding. Structure is our guide to finding fish out there, period. But when we are talking about the where in fishing, it really comes down to exactly where. And sometimes just saying that there's a structure out there, that's not enough because most structures are quite large. So we've got to know exactly where on that structure. And the last time we talked, I brought up and just identified it for you. The keys to finding where on that structure are breaks and break lines. I also said, and just this is a little, as a little reminder, it's the break lines that form the structure. If you don't have any break lines, you wouldn't have structure. You just have a big flat. And you know, and I know, we're not interested in flats. We're interested in structure. So the break lines are a given. They're there. I also brought up the fish can see really well, but they can't see very far. So these fish, when they move on structure, they need some additional help to find their way. And those we refer to as breaks on the break lines. They can't just hit a break line anywhere, helder skelder. If one day they hit it here, another day hit it there. No, they always hit it at the exact spot. And this spot is going to be in a form of a break. In most all cases, break lines don't run in a straight line. They'll be running along and all of a sudden it turns out and then it comes back in. And, you know, it changes direction. And this little change in direction, we refer to that as a finger. Uh... I call them, out here in Florida, we talked a lot about one-sided bars. Trolling along a brake line, here's a slot of water, trolling along a brake line, all of a sudden it turns out, comes back in, that's a finger. Now most structures are quite large. And most of them have more than one change in direction on a brake line. There'll be multiple fingers in many cases. There'll be three, four, five, six. There could be a bunch of potential spots where the fish first make contact. And we're going to have to identify which one it is. Now, what exactly is a contact point? The contact point of a structure is the first place the fish see as they're making their movement or migration on that structure. The very first thing they see that they hit. That's what we refer to as a contact point. Now, in our fishing, and I'll teach you this later, but in our fishing, we're always working from the shallows to the deep. So in our fishing, the last spot that we're going to really hammer is the contact point. But conversely, put yourself down there, you're the fish. To the fish, it's the very first thing they see. It's the last thing we fish, but it's the first thing they see. That's what we refer to as a contact point. And it will always be the same. Now, 
we said the last time we talked that this contact point is going to be in some be some break on a brake line. It could be a rock pile. It could be a stump. It could be a finger. There's. It could be a sunken boat. Something that's different. Remember in our earlier talks, when fish move on structure, they pause and eventually stop at a break on that structure. Keep in mind, brake lines run for a distance. They can't, they, and they'll move along a brake line. Understand, fish will move along a brake line, but they will end up pausing and stopping at a break on that brake line. The contact point. Many times it's going to be a break on that brake line in the form of a finger. So we have to establish which one is the one. Which one will the fish contact? And it will always be the same one. It won't be one today, a different one tomorrow, another one the next day. No. It will always be the same thing. Now, how do we identify which one? I want you to think like the fish for a minute. Be the fish. You're down in deep water. Which of these fingers on this particular bar it's going to be the one that you contact it's going to be the one that you can first see translation the deepest break to the deepest water the first one that you see that's where you're going to make contact now how about if you find a bar that has four or five fingers on it but they all break at the same depth into the same depth of water. Now which one will it be? In that case, it will be the one that breaks the sharpest. Remember we talked about importance of a sharper break. And when I say the sharper break, that's the one that has the steepest activity. It breaks pow, like falling off a rooftop. The sharper break. Let's say that you have four or five fingers on this bar, but they all break with the same steepness. Then which one? You're going to then look for the one that sticks out the furthest. So if you put yourself in the fish's position, you're down there in this deep water, very little light. That's how, because the deeper you go in any body of water, the less light. Most light's gone by the time you reach 30, 35 feet. So which spot? Are they going to contact first? The one that they can see the best. The one that's the closest to them. The one that breaks the deepest. Then the one that breaks the sharpest. The one that sticks out the furthest. That's the contact point. Now, how are we going to establish that? How are we going to figure all that out? It's easy. And as we get into our detailed discussions on the water, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. And it doesn't take long. Even a good sized structure. When I begin, I can pretty much get a detailed map of almost any structure within 10 minutes. 10, 12 minutes. Say the biggest structure that I could ever imagine, maybe 20 minutes. The most. Doesn't take long. But you have to have a procedure, which I'm going to share with you. But we have to establish this. Remember what we talked about last time. The fish may move to the contact point and never move any further. And if we can establish and identify and interpret that contact point, we limit out. But without that spot, we didn't catch fish. So, is it important? Of course it is. It's really important. It's everything in our success. It means everything. We have to be able to get to that spot. Remember? I said there are deep targets out there, but if we can't identify them, it's worthless to know that they're out there if we can't identify them. So we're going to have to get good at identifying the spot. And fortunately for both you and me, there's a way to do that, and it's not all that hard. It's really not all that hard. If you have a boat and motor and a depth sounder, and you put in a little study, or if you listen to this vlog, or the ones that will be coming up over the next two, three weeks, you'll know exactly how to do it and how to get that information. Now, I had some people just after the last uh, vlog we did, uh, people actually asking me, through, through email questions. Why is it so important that we actually get the details rather than just establishing the spot and then fishing it? Or well, sometimes just fishing it, you could get the details. But I'd rather have the details before I fish it. Here's why. I can't really do an effective job of fishing any structure 
unless I have a detailed map of it. I can't interpret something that I can't see. You know, uh, I used to do this as part of our, the schooling that we did the honor water schools and stuff. Sometimes I would pick out a structure. I'd let students pick out a structure, a brand new structure, one that I hadn't even looked at. And we'd run off to this structure, and I would do a detailed map. I wouldn't tell them what I was doing. I would just do it. And then I'd take my tablet. I had one here earlier. And I'd draw out that structure, the detail of that structure. And all of the features on that structure, I would take my soundings and get all of the numbers, and I'd stick them in there. And then I'd say, okay, here's the map. And I'd show it to them. And I'd say, now you tell me where the fish are. Now, the reason I did that, Buck used to do that all the time. He said, okay, we got the map. Now you tell me where the fish are. He'd do the detail. And then say, tell me where the fish are. Well, this is it's simple. It's easy. And <laughs> nothing to it. If you have the map. If you've done the good job on the map, interpreting that map is easy. And here's what we're really looking for, and here's how we say it. And then I'm going to show you in subsequent vlogs, I'm going to show you how to do it. But here's how we say it. What am I looking for when I detail map a structure? I'm looking for the contact point. Well, where is the contact point going to be? And it doesn't matter what kind of structure it is. I want you to mark this down. Your contact point will always be the longest, narrowest, sharpest, deepest break to the deepest water in the area. The next thing I look for is the deepest break. Keep in mind, the contact point is going to be the first thing the fish see as they begin to migrate. Make sure you understand it. Let's say you have a break line that's, that's 25 feet all around the bar, but it, on a, one particular finger or off the end of the bar, that 25 foot break line, actually it doesn't break until it gets to 27 feet and then breaks. That's the deepest break. That's the first thing they're going to see. It's more recognizable than all of the rest. It's different. Okay, let's say that final break line, the final drop off was in fact 25 feet, but 25 feet all the way around, all the different features all breaking at 25 feet into the same depth of water. Which one will be the contact point? The one that breaks the sharpest with the most steepness. They all break at the same depth to the same depth of water, but one is like a flashing light. It's like that neon sign because it breaks sharper. It's more recognizable to the fish. First thing they see. Well, the next question then is, what if they all break at 25 feet into the same depth of water and they all break with the exactly the same steepness? Then which one is it going to be? It's going to be the one that reaches out the furthest into that deep water. So, as we have this saying, our contact point will be the longest, narrowest, sharpest, deepest break into the deepest water in the area. In our interpretation, if all of those things don't come together, and many times they will, your longest, narrowest will be your sharpest and will be breaking the deepest into the deepest water, then it's easy. There's no problem. We don't even have to you know, ask any questions. We got the spot. But what if the depth of water is all the same? Which one breaks the deepest? If that's all the same, which one breaks the sharpest? If that's all the same, which one reaches out the furthest? So you see, we say it this way, longest, narrowest, sharpest, deepest break to the deepest water, but we interpret it the other way. Where's the deepest water in the area? It's right here. There's my fish. The other features don't lead to the deepest water. Then there's my fish. That's my answer. But if the same depth of water is surrounding the structure, then what's next? Well, the one that breaks the deepest the first thing they see. So you see, and then we just go and interpret the other direction. We say it like this, but we interpret it like that as to the importance and where we make our final decision when we say, there's my fish. Now, boy, let me tell you, did my eyes get opened up when Buck taught me mapping and interpretation.
It changed everything for me. I no longer needed him to babysit me. I no longer needed him to take me out and drive the boat and put me on the fish. I didn't need him to do that. He taught me how to do it. And I promise you, I'm going to teach you how to do it. I'm going to tell you everything I know about it. Because there is no question. Detail mapping and interpretation. In fact, let me, let me go back and say it another way. Buck used to say it like this. Mapping is the key to interpretation. Interpretation is the key to knowledge. Knowledge is the key to success. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to stick with that because I would never contradict anything he says. <laughs> and it's all true, but it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a general statement. I'm going to sort of break it down a little bit more and say to you that, yeah, it's really important on our general mapping so that we can make a general interpretation. It's important that you know what to look for when it comes to general mapping. That's before you launch the boat mapping. Season of the, season of the year. Uh, uh, weather and water conditions. What have the weather and water conditions been before the day I go fishing? What species of fish am I after? What's the lake type? If it's a reservoir, is it a flatland, lowland, highland, etc., etc., etc. I get all the answers I can get first before I launch the boat. And then, looking at that contour map, which is our most important tool, as we have discussed, I'm looking for deep water, structure, breaks, and, or break lines. That's what I'm looking for on a contour map. But that doesn't give me the details. And that's when i got to go out and really establish the detail work as far as the detail map, so I can make a detailed interpretation. There's my spot. There is my fish. So when someone asks me, especially when it's a student that's been around for a while, what's the, what's the real key? What's the most important thing you could tell me? Detail, mapping, and interpretation. That's the most important thing. Because the contour maps won't give it to you. Reading about it won't give it to you. You actually have to go out on that water. Even sometimes in that rare case where the contour map gives you a sharper break and you say, man, that got to be the spot. Like Danny and I hitting those fish down at Sam Rayburn. The map gave us that spot. Uh, that it, it wasn't very hard. But that doesn't happen very often. That's, that's, that's sort of an unusual situation where the map will give you the exact spot. But even then, you've got to go out with your depth sonder and your knowledge and the map and put yourself at that exact spot. And then be able to identify, is what the map was telling me, is that correct? And if it is correct, like it was in Sam Rayburn, we dropped the anchor and caught 100 fish. But most of the time, 99% of the time, you're going to have to actually make the detail map, which the contour map will not give you. You're going to have to make that detail map, which I'm going to teach you how to do. And then... To be able to take it at that point and interpret what you're seeing, that's easy. It really is. But without the map, you can't interpret what you can't see. So we're going to be dealing with that over the next few weeks. And we're, I'm going to show not only how to get those detail maps, but then how to interpret them. But before we leave today, I want to show you a very simple map just to get your mindset kind of sort of right in this area before we get start getting a little bit more complicated. I'm taking a simple map that I used in, in Buck Perry schools. And it's just, a, it, it's just a bar that has a few fingers on it. And we're only showing, here I'm just going to put it up right now. And as you see the depths marked in, the only way they got marked in was I had to go out there and do a detailed map. When I established the fingers, I know that when the fish move on structure, it's going to be on a break or a break line. So when I found these breaks in the form of three fingers, I then had to take soundings off of those fingers in order to determine my longest, narrowest, sharpest, deepest break to the deepest water. That's the only way I could get the answer. But I only had to take soundings off of a few different sections of that bar in order to get my answer. We have that finger over there at A uh, that says it's breaking off at 8 feet to 11 feet and then it 
sort of slopes on off and doesn't get real deep over there. And then at letter B, it breaks a little bit deeper. Uh, at 10 feet, it also is breaking at a steepness that breaks 3 feet, same as letter A. So same steepness. And then we come over to letter C and it's breaking off at 12 feet, a little bit deeper. And it breaks into, as you can see, into 50 feet of water. But then as you go up to letter D, we see that there's a lot of deep water along that side of the structure. But I don't really have a feature at D. There's no real break. So as I look at what's in front of me, and if I ask you the question, you're looking at this simple little map, one break line. We took a few soundings. That took about five minutes. Where are my fish? Letter C is a no-brainer. It breaks the deepest into the deepest water. So I'm really excited getting into this area of detail mapping. It's my favorite thing. It's probably the one thing that I'm the best at in my fishing. I got pretty good at it because I did it so much. I loved it. Even when I didn't have to do it, I would go map structures in a lake. I'd, I'd use half of my fishing day to go do some mapping just to do some mapping to see if I could get the answer, see how quickly I could get the answer. I used to play games uh, about how fast could I do it, you know, put it on the clock. When Buck first started me, he put me in a lake and it, uh, in some natural lakes and say, you got three hours to tell me everything that I need to know about this lake. And then he'd sit in the front of the boat, wouldn't say a word. <laughs> the pressure was on, boy. But I, I liked it. It was like somebody said, uh, you know, like when you're playing baseball, which is what I played, you're playing any sport, I say, man, didn't the pressure get you on that particular day or that particular situation? I said, man, I love it. <laughs> the more pressure, the better I like it. I mean, I looked, I look at every challenge like, this is fun. Life would be boring if we didn't have any challenges. And in fishing, mapping and interpretation, more specifically, detail map and interpretation. Draw your finger. Where is the exact spot that I need to cast my lure to catch a fish? Right there. And be right. Oh, nothing like it. So I'm excited. We're at now at this area that we're going to be talking. Detail mapping for the next few weeks. We're going to show a lot of examples. And, and more importantly, I'm going to teach you how to do it. So don't miss any of the stuff that's coming up. It's going to be important to you in your results. So with all that being said, be sure to follow us on Instagram, like us on Facebook, and please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already done it. I want to get this information out to as many people as I possibly can. While I'm still kicking, I want to make sure that I've done all I can do to carry on the truth about successful fishing to as many people as possible. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe today. I appreciate you, and I'll see you the next time.